Hello, I'm Pastor Horace Dowdy, bringing you some meditations on Advent by way of YouTube, and I encourage you to subscribe to Horace Dowdy YouTube if you enjoy these comments. This is the second week of Advent. We have two candles here burning in the Advent wreath, and the subject is the quiet father. Joseph, of all the characters in the Christmas story, he is the most neglected. He had to have been a quiet man because the Bible does not record a single word ever spoken by Joseph. He strikes me as odd. Some may protest that he was not the real father, but anybody knows that whoever cares for and loves an infant from birth to maturity is the real parent. Joseph meets that qualification. Joseph's hands are big and strong. They were working hands. Joseph made a living as a village carpenter, which in those days included blacksmithing as well as woodworking. Almost everybody considered Joseph an ordinary man. After Jesus received fame as a preacher, people asked, isn't he just the carpenter's son? Put yourself in Joseph's place. How would you feel? Obviously, God did not consider Joseph ordinary. Notice the sequence. Almighty God selected this hardworking tradesman to raise and to nurture Jesus Christ. And in every crisis, God spoke not to the people in power, but to silent Joseph. First, there was the embarrassing problem of Mary's peculiar pregnancy. God told Joseph what to do. Without hesitation, our man obeyed and took Mary home. It was Joseph who carefully transported her to Bethlehem. It was he who held her hand during what must have been a frightening labor and delivery of the first child. In a stable. Joseph, you deserve more credit than we give you. Later, God spoke to Joseph again. The baby was in danger. King Herod had ordered mass execution of the little boys. Mary and Joseph must make another difficult trip, this time to Egypt with their small son. Somehow they pulled it off, and I suppose that Joseph with his skill as a carpenter, enabled him to provide for the little family, regardless of where they lived. They survived as refugees until finally returning to Nazareth. Joseph, you deserve credit. Among the villagers, you can be sure that there was gossiping and whispering about how Mary came to have her first job. But in that carpenter shop, Jesus learned from Joseph the satisfaction of honorable labor well done. Joseph guided those young hands as well as the heart of Jesus. It was Joseph who told him the childhood story and who explained how to live. Young Jesus learned to speak in simple and earthy language that he never forgot. Without question, he absorbed his great common sense from the quiet carpenter. God made no mistake when he chose Joseph to help form the character of our Savior, Jesus. To this day, wherever the gospel is spoken, fatherhood is cherished and honored with deep affection. Jesus had only good words about fathers men who strive to provide for their children. He learned it from Joseph. He taught us to think of God as our Father. Joseph, we owe you something. You should never be forgotten. During this Christmas time, can you think of another forgotten father? Maybe your own? I had a father. I remember how during the Great Depression, those very difficult years, he would take his lantern up to the granary at night, night after night, near Christmas. 
And through the cold winter darkness, we could hear the tapping of his hammer after we'd gone to bed. Along with most families, we could not afford many store-bought treasures. But on Christmas morning, there, under the tree, would be the old playthings, toys, rebuilt, renewed. Daddy knew how to fashion a baseball bat or a sled from fresh hickory. And I can still show you how to make a baseball from material at hand, a nut for the center, and a mile of grocery twine, twine carefully wrapped around it until it covered a ball and became a ball. And I never did quite master the technique of sewing on that tight leather jacket, but Dad did. Like Joseph, his big hands now still and silent for years, were motivated by love, a father's love for his children. He wanted to provide more and said so. He gave me the richest gift, though, the best gift of all, a present which I cherish. How I wish I had actually thanked him for it. But for some reason, we were not comfortable speaking about such things, and it's still difficult for me. Jesus may have had the same problem. Joseph, you are of the house and lineage of David. They may have considered you an ordinary man, but you were father to Jesus our Lord. And there may be no such creature as an ordinary father. Today we honor you. We thank you for taking care of the little lad who reshaped the world. Your quiet strength is an example for us. With God's help, we must go and do likewise. Amen.